I want to tell you a story, and it's not my story to tell. And this story isn't not my story. I've been gifted with the honor of connecting with some families who have, who have and continue to utilize the support of WRFN. This poem is a product of this. It's called Blessings Perceived. A bundle of sweet joy, a baby born prime with potential, steeped deep in tradition and expectation. Tongues are held silent. Scared shame hidden for fear of persecution furthering separation, where acceptance and grace linger, hoping and waiting to be delivered next. Parenting in itself a skill not innate. The expectations that accompany the responsibility of raising our children, our able-bodied, not differently-minded children. This journey is hard and certainly not without its sacrifice, equated to being left in a maze and told to figure it out. Our experience is fueling our knowledge, and most do figure it out. Sure, there are plenty of errors to be made along the way. It's all part of the journey. And then your beautiful bundle of sweet joy doesn't smile or look you in the eye. Other babies do that now. Your heart beating outside of your body doesn't lift their head, yet other babies do. Don't compare your child to another as a kindly aunt tells you, and yet constantly they are being measured up on standard growth charts and milestones, and your child just doesn't fit anywhere on anybody's charts. She will in her own time, you are reassured, but deep in your soul you know without language just a knowing that this journey for both of you is not taking you anywhere you could have imagined. Some may have heard of Holland. And while I'm sure Holland is a wonderful destination, when your heart is set on Italy, everything else isn't that. Sprinkle in some exclusionary limitations forever altering this journey, and what do you do now? <coughs> Dive in. All in. The care they need not available doesn't even really exist in any capacity that could actually improve their quality of life. You become what they need. You turn yourself inside out and exhaust every means possible to do the completely expected impossible. And you'll be patted on the back in so many ways for doing the right thing, for being a great parent, and you'll know the only thing you want is to see them succeed at life, happy with its so many options. And you'll be given positivity cliches handed out like samples at Costco. You're only given what you can handle as you cry yourself to sleep wondering how you'll ever be big enough or smart enough or loving enough to fix this because there has to be a way. And you'll come to realize you have to handle what's been given to you. Like ending up in Holland when you set out for Italy. And now with the diagnosis, you've been left in this maze and all of your senses drastically reduced. And then what? Hope and prayers always help, but alone it's not enough. So what do you do? You grieve. You grieve for the child you thought you'd have, and just as fiercely you learn to care for the one you do have. Cry and sob and beg and bargain and fight, and eventually some acceptance settles, if only to cry and beg and bargain and fight over and over again and again to make at least a space in this world for your child to be. As your story unfolds, so do you. At every turn, lean in for another curve, learning that winding is so often the only way in a world of straight lines and angles. And in somewhat of their own way, growth happens. Their chance to dance. And their successes become yours. A smile, an intentional eye contact, a new word, a rollover, a successful potty attempt, a wobbly step where there had been little hope of that ever happening become joyous celebrations. All the while, fear and worry remain silent, pervasive companions that you learn to accept as permanent residents now. All too often, siblings are left to the side in the wake of a diagnosis. Older siblings expected to be supportive amidst the chaos of their family's whirlwind, but who holds their hand when everyone's focus is on the child with a diagnosis? And what about having another child? Either planned or by surprise. Fear and stigma etched into your DNA, waiting and hoping for healthy, 
What ifs haunting your hopes? Understanding perhaps for the first time how ignorance can be so blessedly blissful. And how about marriages? Who helps families stay together when all resources utilized to exhaustion are focused on primarily the child diagnosed? Too many questions that few have answers to. Appointments, consults, second and third opinions, searching for resources, answers, searching for hope. Sometimes that comes in the form of compassion. Parents who've struggled and fought and out of those ashes came resiliency and the desire to ease and assist other families and WRFN was born. A resource created for families by families, recognizing and supporting the complexity and diversity of families. A desperately needed service that has brought light, connections, and even a map for so many families left in this maze. And love. Not regulated by legislation, therefore not limited in its capacity to offer truly needed support. This resource continues to ease an exceptionally difficult journey for all those who can access it. Learning advocacy as opposed to adversity, especially in navigating school systems. We're told to celebrate our differences, but too often sit silent in shame because of them. Parent mentors hold space to lighten this burden, brightening the dismal fog of gloom that can't be just wished away. Embarrassingly empty schedules finally filled by programs like the Coffee Club. Or finding your passion, offering connections for those that need it most. What if the answers lie in our own perceptions of perfection? What if we created a world where we embraced and nurtured disabilities and differences instead of fearing them? I've heard it said that our differently abled children become our greatest blessings we never knew we needed. So here's to the children who simply by existing make this world a better place. And here's to the families who work so diligently to make a better place in this world for them, and in turn, all of us. Thank you.